Here we are on day three of the process. So far, we've collected the DNA, fragmented it into three kilobase segments, inserted those segments into the plasmids, and inserted the plasmids into the E. coli bacteria. We let the bacterial colonies of E. coli grow and transferred the colonies containing the cloned fragments of genomic DNA into these 384 well plates. A single well on these plates contains a colony of E. coli bacteria. Each bacteria contains a plasmid with our DNA insert that we want to sequence. Each well contains a different genomic DNA clone. We are almost ready to read the DNA sequences. But first, we have to crack open the E. coli bacteria and get out the DNA we want to sequence. The first step is to place the 384 well plates into a PlateMate Plus robot. This transfers the E. coli into a new 384 well plate that contains a TE buffer solution, which protects the DNA, as the following processes are meant to break apart the cell walls of the E. coli bacteria. Now we place the 384 well plate on the thermocycler. The thermocycler very precisely heats and cools each plate repeatedly. At this point, our plasmid with the DNA insert is still contained within the E. coli bacteria. We separate the plasmids from the E. coli by heating the plate to 95 degrees Celsius. That's almost the boiling point of water. This is just enough to burst the cell walls of the bacteria, but not damage the DNA of the plasmids. Now each well of the plate has a solution of plasmids and broken bits of E. coli bacteria. The next step is to duplicate or amplify the plasmids. A process called rolling circle amplification is used. To start the rolling circle amplification, we add a templify reagent to the solution in the wells. The templify reagent consists of DNTPs, which are synthesized free nucleotides, the enzyme that builds the duplicate strands of plasmid DNA, and random hexamer primers, which give the Phi29 polymerase a starting point on the plasmid to start the replication process. The process of rolling circle amplification begins when the random hexamer primers locate and bind to complementary sequences on the plasmid template DNA. The prime DNA is replicated. The enzyme continues to replicate the template DNA until it encounters a double-stranded region, but the enzyme used for rolling circle amplification displaces the double-stranded region, unzipping the DNA as it replicates the template DNA. The unzipped DNA can now be primed and replicated. Because the hexamer primers have all possible ATGC letter combinations, multiple locations are primed. The result is the snowflake-like structures that characterize the rolling circle amplification process. Now we allow this solution to incubate for another 18 hours at 30 degrees Celsius. We do this by placing it in an incubator. 